Welcome back, everybody. I've been busy building what I think might be the perfect subwoofer. So this is the GSG 15 inch Marty Cube kit, and it is the perfect mix of size, cost, and performance. This thing is a monster. Stick around and I'm gonna show you how you can build one because it's super easy. Before we get started, if you're into tech hi-fi or movies, be sure to push the subscribe button for new weekly videos. Today, we're gonna to take a deep dive, and I mean a super deep dive, into the Roundover Marty Sub version 2.1 enclosure. Specifically, the 15 inch version. Now, what's great about this kit is that it's CNC cut to assemble super easy. I don't have a full woodworking shop, so for me, I can't really cut all these panels out and get them exactly the right size. Well, GSG does this for you and sends you this kit that's kind of like IKEA furniture, but for awesome subwoofers. To get started, I'm going to show you the tools that you need to build this subwoofer. But first, a few words from our sponsor, Anchor. If you use a laptop but don't have a docking station yet, check out the Anchor USB-C docking station. Transform your workstation with the Anchor USB-C docking station. And today you can save 20% off site-wide by using discount code ANCHORTB, A-N-K-E-R-T-B, link below in the notes. To build this kit, you're going to need a handful of tools and materials. First, you're going to need wood glue, a brush, and some towels for cleanup. You're going to need large clamps, 24 or 36 inches, some smaller clamps, a rubber mallet, some paint, and some wooden dowels. Assembly for the subwoofer should take somewhere around two days to complete. So this will be a nice weekend project. Most of the time is allowing glue to dry and you kind of sitting there watching it, but you do want to make sure you give it time to dry completely in between steps so that things don't get squirrely on you, right? I put together a two hour epic build video for this particular kit where it shows every piece assembled painstakingly in detail. So if you do decide to jump in and build this kit, make sure to find that video and watch. The link is down below in comments. Now the build is broken up into a handful of stages. The first stage is assembly and glue up. This is assembly of the superstructure. All of the wood gets glued together and is allowed to dry. From there, you need to finish the subwoofer. And most people will typically use something like a Duratex and either roll or spray that on. That gives you a nice finish that's easy to apply and looks pretty good. From there, you'll actually install the speaker and all of the wiring. At that point, you have a fully finished, ready, passive subwoofer that you can install in your home theater. Installation of this subwoofer is pretty straightforward, but there are a few things that you need to consider. Now, first, this is a passive subwoofer, and what that means is that there is no plate amplifier built in, so you'll need to use an external amplifier. I use a Sinbison FP10,000Q, which is a four-channel amplifier that has a lot of guts, right? And uh, it does a great job of powering two of these. I bridge the amplifier and drop all of the power into two of these units. If your AVR doesn't have some kind of advanced subwoofer tuning tool, then you'll want to purchase something similar to a mini DSP 2x4 HD that allows you to tune or integrate multiple subwoofers and make them sound awesome. That's what I do. Now it's time to talk measurements, and we're gonna talk about this both single and dual. And we're gonna start out with a single measurement, right? So just, just one of the units. And uh, this is kind of what it looks like at a base level 
uh, in my room. Remember, this hump and this hump are room induced. This is sitting in the center of my screen, about nine feet from the main listening position where I have the microphone at. So this is a real world measurement. And there is no crossover on this. So you can see it's very linear. And then at about, oh, 16 hertz in my room, it starts rolling off naturally. Like I said, remember, there is no crossover here. So there's no low pass or high pass filter going. And, you know, the high pass filter is the one that you need to be concerned about because that's where you blow your subwoofer up uh, with ported boxes way down low. Now, as we pump up the volume, yay, pump up the volume, you can see uh, the curve is, is pretty linear, right? Now, when I got to this point, you know, we're pushing out 106, 107, 8 decibels. And, you know, I got a little bit nervous, right? Because uh, everything was running and there's way more in the tank here. But I just didn't want to break this as that, you know, this is kind of something that's going to live with me for a while. So I did add in a crossover. Um, and uh, at the same volume setting with a crossover uh, installed, you know, it, it allows things to roll off just a little bit here on the bottom. So let me let me turn off the rest of these so you can kind of see what's going on here at the crossover and no crossover. So this is a really good example of what you do to protect the, the subwoofer. With that crossover in place, I did bump up the volume a bit more and then a bit more. So you can see by itself as a single unit, this sub is hitting 110 decibels at 30 hertz and uh, with the crossover rolling off from there. So absolutely strong. Now let's swap over and look at two of these measured together. This is the baseline for the dual measurement and this is two units um, in a left and right position. So nothing in the center of the room anymore, but still measured at the main listening position. So again, another real world measurement and we can start pushing the volume up a bit. Now, uh, one thing to remember is that I do have this running through a mini DSP and I did spend 10 minutes, you know, trying to integrate these. So it wasn't so bad. Um, uh, but you know, the, the performance, can be better than what we're seeing here, given uh, enough time and expertise on tuning these two subs together. But you can see that, uh, you know, they, 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 they get quite loud, right? And so we're up at 114 decibels and um, at 28-ish uh, hertz, is this right? Yeah, 28. Uh, and no crossover. So again, I'm worried that I'm going to kill these things if I push them, you know, up into the 120s, uh, something like that. So this is as high as I measured here. Um, as you can see, really nice curve, really strong output, particularly considering the cost of these. So, uh, you know, all in all, a wonderful set of subwoofers. Now, the last thing I want to look at is just, uh, you know, the singles uh, versus the uh, the combined output. Now, this is just for giggles. So this is uh, a single, the left, measured uh, with my volume set at 65. And then here's the right uh, with the volume at 65. And you can see the room does all kinds of crazy shenanigans. And then when you put them both together, you can see how at least they're summing and, and they're not giving a lot of cancellation. Uh, things get, you know, crazier as you get higher up around 80, but you know, you'll likely cross these things over up here anyway. Uh, so that solves a lot of this in my room, but this is just a good example. So you can see how two different subwoofers will combine and uh, you, you can see there's a, there's a lot of additional output, you know, uh, with one sub here at this uh, 28 Hertz, you know, you're, you're getting um, 94 decibels, uh, off of each individually, but together you're up here at 106 decibels. So um, having two is good. The last piece of the puzzle that I want to comment on here is the driver. So we've talked about the box from GSG and the amplification I used from Sinbison, but a huge part of the magic of this subwoofer being so good is the SQL 15 from Stereo Integrity. This subwoofer is absolutely spectacular, right? Uh, for the unit cost of, I think it's 300 bucks each on sale, you get an unfathomable amount of bass out of this thing. It, it, it is so much more powerful than you would think $300 can produce, um, but it does it, right? And the measurements that you've seen here are absolute proof that this thing is a 
crazy monster base machine. So when you're looking at which driver to purchase for this GSG kit, make sure to give the Stereo Integrity SQL15 some thought because that SQL15 is worth every penny and I highly recommend it. So the last question is, how much does all this stuff cost, right? So let's let's break it down. The driver that I use, the SQL15, is 300 each. The box from GSG is about 320. So you're looking at 620 bucks there. Then you're going to have another $100 in parts. And that's really enough for two units, right? Paint, uh, glue, brush, that kind of thing. Um, but on top of that, you have to get an amplifier as well. So if you're going to go all in uh, for two units, you're going to be looking at uh, $2,200, I think, all in. So uh, $1,100 a unit for an absolute powerhouse of a subwoofer that you get to build that looks good, sounds great, and can tear your house down. All right. Thanks so much for watching. That's the end of the video. Remember, like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all those things, and I'll see you all in the next video.